John 10. John 10. <clears throat> John chapter 10 and verse 7. How's everybody today? Blessed and highly flavored. Praise God. verse 7. Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to them again. Jesus ever repeat something to you? Amen. Thank God, huh? <laughs> Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers. In other words, there are many that were coming, proclaiming them to be a savior or the way out. But the sheep did not hear them. Are you a sheep? Yes. Amen. Then you're not to hear the powers of darkness voice. Amen? We're to ignore them. That's why we make t-shirts that say, who told you that? <laughs> right? Because the problem in everything is the enemy's influence. Amen? Amen. It's the enemy's influence. If we can constantly expose the enemy's influence, we'll have victory. How many of you know you can use anyone at any time? Amen. Yeah. It says, and whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So if somebody's come to steal, kill, destroy your peace, joy, and righteousness, are you to hear them? No. no. Don't get sucked in the ring. Amen. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be what? Saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. Again, I want you to know that does not say find pastor. <laughs> it says find pasture. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> the thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it what? More abundantly. More abundantly. How many of y'all want abundant life? You know, there's more to life than just traditional life. <laughs> and, but the connection to the, we, the, the way you maintain an abundant life Besides just a traditional life, people become wealthy and all kinds of stuff and think that they got abundant life. They don't know that they're miserable. Amen. Then they battle and fight to keep their wealth. And they live to keep their wealth. But there's another life which is given by the life giver and the source of all substance. Again, the source of all substance. That's why the word says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. You remember, Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly. Not to carry on the traditions of man's life abundantly, but to carry on an eternal life abundantly. Because the greatest, listen, the greatest treasure I ever got was his life. Man, I can't go any farther than that. His life. The greatest treasure. To know his name and to know that we have another place prepared and waiting for me and you. That this place temporarily stinks. Amen. But it's going to change. Amen. And it's going to change for a thousand years. And then we're out of here for permanently, and everything's going. Everything's going to fold up and go away. And we enter a new existence. Don't know where. Don't have to. 
but to live this life without knowing where you're headed. It's terrible. Or to live this life to think you know where you're going <laughs> and you're not getting there is terrible. <laughs> he came to bring me and you life abundant. The life from above, the eternal life from abundant. Why? Because if you are connected to the life eternal, all the other traditions of life that bombard you will not overtake you. And that's the area where we maintain that connection to the life eternal because he is the source of all substance and he is the giver of life. 1 Corinthians 3. You know, there are people that are living in cardboard boxes that are happier than many people that have a lot of things. Because they have Jesus. When me and my wife got restored, my living room furniture was cardboard boxes. We sat on the floor because I pawned everything. <laughs> Praise God. But you know what? I had everything. Amen. I had Jesus. I didn't have a bank account. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have nothing. But yet I possessed everything. I had him. Wherever, whatever, it didn't matter. Somehow, some way, he would make a way. When I ran out of food, when I did all of the, even when I was out there doing stupid stuff, God still made a way. And he was just waiting for me. Waiting for me to come back home as a prodigal son. And when I did, then things began to gradually be released. The abundant life. As he could trust me with a little, he gave me more. As he could trust me with a little bit more, he gave me more. Then he said, use what I gave you. Don't ask. And I didn't ask for any more. I didn't ask for a phone. I didn't ask for nothing. Why? Because I had everything. When I had him, I didn't need nothing. And that's something that you and I got to maintain in that arena, maintain that connection, that only in him, when we have him, we have nothing. But yet, when we have him, we have everything. Amen. Has everybody got it? In 1 Corinthians 3, 5. Oh, the traditions of men can really cause problems. <laughs> you know, we've been brought up by, by cloned by TV and music. This is how family should be. This is how you're supposed to get an education. This is how this is supposed to be. This is how, I mean, totally brought down the family line. We were always born that we weren't anybody. And the words we heard most of the time from our family was, you need to become somebody. Well, what the heck? But see, God said you were already somebody. But you know, most of us were brought up in the traditions of men and even in religious traditions. But not true connection to eternal life and that life abundantly. In verse 5, would you speak it with me? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one. I planted a polis watered, but God gave the what? Increase. Who gives the increase? God. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are what? One. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, and you are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, in other words, the word grace means plan, according to the plan of God that was given to me, Paul said, as a wise builder, say wise builder. Wise builder. So we need to be a wise builder, don't we? Not unwise, but wise, but that wisdom comes from above. 
According to the plan of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ. So the foundation is the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Again, it's God who gives the increase. So we need to stop looking at man as giving the increase. When it is God who gives the increase to the righteous. Now the devil gives the increase to the unrighteous. Does everybody get that? See, you can, you can prosper out there, but it ain't from God. So there's a battle over increase in abundance right now. There's a battle over it. Why? Because the more that you have, the more you can give. Amen? Amen. But many people in the arena that are under the wicked, the more they have, the more they store. The more they build, the more they build. The more. But see, the enemy doesn't want to get abundant life or prosperity. He wants to prevent it from getting to the hands of the righteous because they are givers where the powers of darkness are takers. There's a difference. So there is a battle over the increase in abundance. And Colossians chapter 2. Oh, happy day. Colossians 2.16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. So let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Why? Because he's the one who provides all substance. Amen? But remember, he's the life giver. And in that life giver, he gives his presence, he gives his glory, his truth, and his power all sealed in the anointing of Christ. What a gift. Hallelujah. Now, verse 18. Let no one what? Cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom, not holding, I want to say that again, not holding fast to the head. from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the what? Increase that is from God. So many fall from that area not holding to the head. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world or the traditions of men, why as though living in the world you do subject, do you subject yourselves to what? Regulations, do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have a, an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So they're not holding fast to the head Christ. In other words, they're not holding fast to his ways and his abundance or his spiritual ways. So everybody get this. Not holding fast to how he handles things, to his character. In other words, seeing what he sees. Not holding fast to his promises, his covenant, his word. Not holding fast to these things. And we are to hold fast to these things. Why? His ways of abundance spiritually, physically, and financially. He wants to bring things to us. In Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4 and verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. 
For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not mixing with faith in those who heard it. In other words, they got disconnected. Amen. Now faith comes by hearing and hearing the what? Word of God. And if his words are not mixed with his presence, with faith, they will profit nothing. They profit nothing. So we must have an understanding of God's intent all the time. Does everybody get that? We must have an understanding of God's intent all the time. What is the intention of his word when he speaks? See, many people just hear the word, but don't grab hold of it and make it active. They don't utilize it as an intent. They just hear it. Many people just quote it with no intent behind it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since, therefore, it remains that some must enter it, and those whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, today after such a long time, as it has been said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Again, faith comes by hearing, hearing the words of God. And if his words are not mixed with the presence of God and faith, they are come to nothing. They have no activation. So it's our responsibility to constantly activate. Everyone say activate. Stir up. Be connected. Make sure that the intent of God is behind the words that you speak. Psalm 43. Psalm 43. <clears throat> oh, yes. Yes, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And God came to bring life abundantly. <laughs> What a treasure. Verse, or Psalm 43, verse 1. Let's speak it. Vindicate me. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful man and woman and unjust. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning, mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, do what? Send out your light and your truth. Let them what? Lead me and let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O oh God, my God. Listen, benefits of abundant life <laughs> is vindication. Vind God will vindicate you. But when you vindicate yourself, you sow in the flesh. Amen. When the attacks come against your life and life advancements of the internal increase, because God is always trying to increase you, he said, request something important. Request that he leads you, that he release his light and his truth to you to lead you out of the traps that have been preset. Why? So that you can enter his presence and reconnecting to the life giver of all abundance. Remember, without his light, you can't see. And that's one of the things that the enemy loves to do is start to bring blinders on us again. He tries to get us in a religious state instead of a relationship state. And 3 John, 3 John,
Third John. Verse 2. Third John, verse 2. Abundant life. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. I don't think there's anyone here that doesn't want to prosper. Right? <laughs> I, I pray that you prosper in what? All things. <laughs> and be in good what? Good health, just as your what? <laughs> your soul prosper. So your mind, in other words, your way of thinking must change. What's it going to do? So your God has come to bring you abundant life, so that means that you must prosper in converting of your soul so that you think the way he thinks, so that you see the way he sees, so that you choose the things that he would choose, and that you have dominion over your emotions and over your imagination. Hello? In other words, there's a whole change. Things are all being set in you in an orderly way according to the kingdom business, kingdom principles within you, your soul, your way of thinking. Your soul's being converted now. So he says, listen, you want to prosper? He's talking about spiritually, physically, and financially. But without spiritual prosperity, in other words, you must have the knowledge of Christ and the revelations. He says, for I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. So is walking in the truth going to prosper you? Yes, because you're activating it all the time. It's alive now. See, you may take the truth, but not keep it alive. There's a lot of people that know the truth. Doesn't mean it's alive in them. Amen. Amen. You and I should have control over all influence of worldly traditions of unrighteousness. And let us, it should not move us out of the way, nor cause us to react, but to respond. Amen. Amen. That's if your soul is converted and the process never stops. Listen, we're going to be in a place of always wanting to learn, always being hungry, always gaining more knowledge of Christ, always. The moment you begin to cease that, it begins to open a door because you're not strengthening your inner man and you're not maintaining the conversion of your soul all the time. 1 Corinthians 2. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2 is just for you. You'll notice that when you begin to exchange eternal knowledge for temporary knowledge, you become more irritated. You become easily provoked. You begin to react more instead of respond more. In fact, you hate it. <laughs> you hate it. Verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's speak it. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That preparation is abundant life. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So God is always trying to bring us to a place where we are searching out more revelation knowledge of who he is. For what man knows the things of a man except for the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the what? Spirit of God. Now, we've not re now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things, it's called abundant life. Amen? Freely given to us by the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of God. 
I'm going to say that again. It's been freely given to us by the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation in the knowledge of God. How many of y'all know knowledge is power? Amen. Amen. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, people have knowledge but no understanding. When there's knowledge without understanding, it's not truth. It's just hearsay. That's why many people reject the word of God because they have no understanding. They th just think it's hearsay. I can't tell you how many Christians, so-called Christians, I speak to who do not get fed by the word and by the spirit. They get fed by everywhere else and everything else. They get fed more by emotion than I do anything else. I feel this. I feel that. Believe me, feelings do not feed you. They starve you. Proverbs 29. He has freely given us the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of Christ. In verse 18. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Oh, let's speak it. Where there is no what? Revelation. Where there is no what? Revelation. revelation. Where there is no revelation, what happens? The people cast off restraints of the flesh. So what the enemy tries to do is to get you busy enough so you don't get fed. So you're no longer seeking revelation from God. Does everybody get that? He wants you to get into a place where you're no longer seeking revelation from him. You may do your prayers but not seek. See, seeking revelation from God is different. Remember when Jesus asked who, when he said, who did they say that I am? And, and only Peter's were whole, only one out of them that got revelation. Revelation comes from the Father. So what happens is when you and I, because it's revelation knowledge, where there's no revelation knowledge, the restraints come off, but happy is he who keeps the law. So no revelation, no restraints. So you and I must increase and maintain a level of revelation knowledge of Christ, which maintains your identity of who you are in Christ. Then you will have restraints. You won't allow the worldly traditions of men to influence you. Or false religions to influence you. You and I are in need of revelation. Now you may get illumination, but we need revelation. You may get illumination in here, but revelation comes in a personal level. Amen? In Romans 1. Now, the illumination you get in here may lead to a revelation. Amen? That's why it's called illuminate, to bring you to a revelate. Romans 1. Yes, Romans 1. No, they didn't. Have it. Romans 1, 28. Romans run. <laughs> I used to be Roman. I was Roman Catholic, Roman for the truth. Hallelujah. In verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their what? In their knowledge. God gave them over to an abased mind to do the things which are not fitting. So God just like, go ahead. You got the different mind now. Being filled with all what? Unrighteousness. Sexual immorality. 
Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them or do such things. Okay, so they refuse to re maintain <laughs> the knowledge of God. They refused it. Or they never even got revelation knowledge of God. So they became under another mind, which is the spirit we call the prince of power of error that promotes disobedience and causes people to go to hell. Amen? They refuse to maintain the knowledge of God. They lost abundance of his life and love. They lost it. How many know the devil wants to always breach God's love? He does a very good job of it, doesn't he? Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> oh, yes. Ephesians 1, verse 13. I am convinced when I pray, he hears me. And we're convinced that when he, we sing, he draws near to us. Amen? The beauty. The greatest treasure. You know, not only that, is in that area where you know that you are related as a son and daughter of God Almighty. It's just an awesome thing. Just awesome. In verse 13, is everybody there? Let's speak it. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, of covenant, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you what? Give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him which will cause increase. <laughs> and the eyes of your understanding... <clears throat> the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling for you, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places." Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. That's why he says, don't be disconnected from the head. Which he, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. In other words, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him is essential. In other words, without revelation, the restraints are moved, weakened, and sometimes totally removed. That's why people are always reacting instead of responding because the restraints are not there. Amen? <clears throat> the knowledge of his ways, his intents, his desires, his love, his sacrifice, and his coming. The knowledge of his authority and power, the anointing, the knowledge of his presence, the knowledge of his glory and his promises of who he is, and keeping it activated in me and you. 
keeping it activated in our lives, which brings me and you life abundant. Listen, if you keep it activated, you will have life abundance. Amen? It's like taking a battery out of a, a light. Once the battery draws, goes dead, or you take the battery out of the light, there's no more light. But you must look at the revelation knowledge of God Almighty is charging battery. When you put it in, it brings light. The more you have light with you, the more you see. The more you maintain a thirst and hunger. The more you want to please him. The more you're sensitive to conviction. The more you're sensitive of repentance. And when the enemy tries to put something in between that gives you a desire more than God's presence, it's exposed. There's a difference. Jesus came to bring me and you this life. And this life that he's given us, which is abundant, is to be activated all the time. Do you ever see those dudes that uh, they do for advertisement? They have the air. You know, once the air goes, they're flat. But what keeps it going? There's electricity going to a blower, isn't it? Once it's unplugged, the enemy tries to unplug you. Then what happens is your concerns and your cares are activated according to the world and not diminished. Amen? Then you begin to fight for your life again and not even realize it. And fear comes. Oh, fear loves that arena. You say, oh man, that one's unplugged, I'm going. He's looking for unplugged believers. Colossians 1. Life abundantly. It doesn't come without a fight. <laughs> it's a fight of position. It's a fight all the time for it. Remember, the devil comes to steal and kill. God comes to bring life and life abundantly. But the devil would like to exchange your abundant life for his abundant life, which isn't too long. It ends shortly. Colossians 1, verse 9. <clears throat> Let's speak it. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of him. Why? If you're increasing in this knowledge, revelation knowledge, are you going to increase in abundance? Amen. Yes. Yeah. Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. In whom we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is above all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind, your thoughts, by wicked words, yet now he has reconciled. And in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. 
If indeed you what? You what? Ah, there's a key word. Continue. Don't get disconnected. Continue activating with revelation knowledge by the spirit of revelation, increasing in the knowledge, increasing in relationship, increasing in all of these areas. If you continue in these things, in faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. If you will increase, does everybody see that? Then you will increase what? Life abundant. Life abundant. Listen, we're going to have life trials. Hey Amen. Everybody has a moment of life sucks, then we die. I mean, everybody has those moments. But we go beyond those moments. They don't hold you. They don't stall you. They don't stop you. You just keep going. You may trip, fall, get up, you shake the dust off, and you continue to go again. You continue to increase. You continue to activate no matter what's going on around you. You don't let your surrounding and atmosphere and circumstance affect you. And I'm not saying it's not going to have some kind of... But you walk away from it. That's why the, the, the word says... Depart from evil. Avoid stupid conversations. I guess what we call stupid conversations are arguments. Avoid them. Depart from them. Don't prove yourself. You've already been pre-approved. Amen. Because when you prove yourself, you start reacting. Hello? <laughs> then there's a fight over my flesh is bigger than yours. 2 Peter 1. Oh, happy days. Listen, we want life and life abundant from above. We're to be a storehouse and a warehouse of God's goodness. We're to carry the spirit of life giving. Amen? Jesus paid a tremendous price for me and you. We never want to lose the area of what he's done for us. Amen? Don't live there, you know. But never lose where he's brought you from. Amen. Never lose sight of how many times he's forgiven us. <laughs> I mean, we all have a book of forgiveness. <laughs> In fact, some of us have a few novels. <laughs> a whole warehouse full, man. Praise God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Oh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. I think so. Yeah, that's it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? So we see that grace is God's plan and peace. It's going to be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the what? The knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been, see, have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through Laws. Now, this is powerful. He's talking. He says, look, at, here's this divine revelation knowledge that's granted for me and you. By keeping it activated, you're going to have life abundantly. Why? Because you will have an activated divine nature. That divine nature will bring life abundance. Did Jesus have favor? Amen. There wasn't anything he lacked. And there wasn't anything he couldn't ask for that didn't happen. Because God was with him. He had abundant life, but his abundant life was not stored up for him. It was stored up for me and you. Amen? Amen? What an awesome dad. What a price. He's a, he was like that alabaster box that was broken, then the oil went everywhere. The precious oil. And when, they, when his presence touched us, changed us. It was one touch. 
That's all you need. One touch, one word that was anointed by him that touched your heart changed you. It was a process of conversion. Why? Because he's trying to get life abundant. But he is the life abundant. It isn't about materialism. It isn't about jewelry. It isn't about gifts and presents. The greatest gift you got and I got was his life. He gave his life. What a present. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add your faith virtue to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness Love. For if these things, if the, here we go, that's a part of that, continue, if, don't get disconnected, hello. If these things are yours and abound, you will neither be what? You will neither, you, you will be not, neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it will constantly come to you. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted. Well, it's his light that brings sight. So the lack of activating these things in our life will bring blindness to you. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to what? Blindness. And has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Why? Because he's now caught up in the past. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never what? Stumble and get sucked in. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Chapter 3, 2 Peter 3, and we'll close here. Oh, glory. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. Therefore, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, has written to you, as also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures, because they're not filled with the Spirit, nor can they interpret what the Word of God says. They may have knowledge, but no understanding to that. And it changes things. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand. Does everybody know this beforehand? Okay. Beware. Lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. Beware. But grow. Grow in grace, the plan, and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed that you've come to bring us life abundantly. Let us continue to be thirst and hungry for the revelation knowledge by your spirit that we may continue to activate the things you've given us and taught us so that we may be overcomers of every area, not being influenced by worldly traditions of men, fake news, and all the other stuff that tries to lie to us and mislead us in any way. But we will be strong in the Lord and the power of your might, forgiving and blessing all those that have persecuted us, spoke against us, and basically don't understand us. We forgive them and we bless them and we walk forward knowing that we carry the most awesome gift 
and the treasure of eternity in these temples in Jesus' name.